here's here's two things that I want to say as I go through and I read all of these histories. Here's two things that I want to say. I want to be super ultra clear on this, okay? One is something that I've told you guys several times is I'm free from the biases of having a political allegiance, okay? I don't have to worry about appealing to progressives. I don't have to worry about appealing to conservatives. I just have to worry about appealing to my audience, okay? This is something that gives me a lot of freedom to explore different positions intellectually without feeling beholden to a certain political group. However, being free from political narratives or political biases like that, those types of political biases, that doesn't make me free from all bias, okay? Don't misunderstand. Uh, it is super possible that I, as a Westerner, might feel a certain way about things because I am going to have uh, almost a religiously fervent adherence to the tenets of like liberalism and democracy and all that shit, right? So as a Westerner, I might feel a certain type of way about things. As an American, I might feel a certain way about things. And as an English speaker, I might feel a certain type of way about things. One of the things that I noticed, and I did this a bit off stream as well, is reading the Arabic articles on a lot of these topics gives you sometimes meaningfully different interpretations of events or different sources for how people are writing about things. People that are educated, I had a guy I think from Saudi Arabia email me, and it was interesting because I think he had said that like he'd learned a lot of similar events, but from an Arabic perspective, they're shaded a lot differently. There are different quotes that are picked, there are different parts of history that are focused on. So yeah, always be aware of that. That when I say things like, I don't have to worry about being like super politically partisan in certain ways, that doesn't mean that I'm lacking in all bias. Don't think, don't ever think that like, oh, because Destiny is like independent, um, that means that he is 100%, you know, like a, 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 a an observer of truth and fact and logic, and he has no personal biases whatsoever. Uh, as long as you're a human being raised on the planet Earth, you're gonna be biased in some way towards something, right? That's almost always gonna be the case, just uh, yeah, that was one thing. There was a second thing, but I don't remember what it was, but yeah. Sam Harris podcast history basically blends the conflict entirely on the religious certainty of jihadists. No, I've watched Sam Harris. I'm sorry. And I know some of you guys get irritated on this. I, I just don't view this as a religious conflict. Maybe in the past 20 years, it's gotten more religious, but I think it is very clearly a conflict between Arabs and the incoming European Jews. I think that I, I, I feel like that is the only framing that makes sense. Um, framing it religiously just doesn't. It just... If it was a religious, here's what I'll say, okay? If it was a religious conflict, Jews would have lost 70 years ago. Very, very, very easily. Jews would have been fucking annihilated. They wouldn't even have had a shot. No matter how many fucking miraculous six-day wars or whatever, Jews would have been annihilated. If the Arab people were, in, uh, were, were united in their religiously fervent hatred and desire to abolish Jews in the continent. But it was a, it was a, it was a, a, a nationalist it was like a nationalist conflict between the Arab states and the Jews, with all of the Arab states having their competing nationalistic interests as well. To frame it as a religious conflict, just it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. If it was a religious conflict, the Jews would have lost. There are so many other people around them that would have killed them uh, because of the Muslim versus Jewish. Why do you think Arabs were so much against a Jewish state, though? It's because in Islam, Jews are extremely frowned upon. I don't agree with that. I think they were against the state because Britain had made promises to, to a lot of people, but Britain had made promises that they would retain that land, but also because um, it, they, I don't think it was as much against European Jews or, or Jews, it was the Europeans that were coming in, which were largely Jewish. I think that was the fear, that they were losing that continent. And there might have been, there might be some like religious stuff here, but like overwhelmingly it's because a whole bunch of European settlers were coming in to settle the land and kick out the native, I say native, the Arabs that, that were native to that territory. I don't like using native. The Arabs that were already there. I think I think that's the huge issue. It, it, it's not that they were Jews. Like it could have been white Christians and it would have been the same issue. Um, it could have been people from Eastern Europe that were whatever, gypsy. I don't know anybody. It literally could have been anybody. Um, but it was the outsiders, the people coming from Europe that they largely contested coming in. Oh, like everybody, well, everybody fucked with everything. That's like the issue. Like everybody, everybody fucked with everything. Uh, so like, for instance, one of the, and I'm curious what Loner Box would say about this. One of the early things was a lot of people accused the Jews of being unethical because they purchased a whole bunch of land when they started moving in people there. Is that unethical? I don't know a good argument for why that's unethical. Uh, the Arab farmers that lived there didn't own any of the land. It was owned by other people, sometimes by the Ottoman state, lent to or sold to other people. So the only argument against it I can see is it just feels shitty to buy land and kick people off of it when they don't own it. But like, I don't think that's a strong argument. Uh, but maybe... I don't know, maybe other people will have feelings about that. Oh, actually, wait, here's a quick thing. Um, I got into a big fight over over this picture. I'm curious what the Arabs and the, and the Israelis will do 
or, or how you feel about this. So there's a picture that goes around a lot that uh, apparently Jewish people feel really proud of. I, I don't know if this is like a piece of like Israeli propaganda that you guys are tell, tell yourselves. Somebody tried to put forth this argument that Tel Aviv was built here in sand dunes, okay? And it was an amazing feat, an amazing accomplishment by the Jewish people that Tel Aviv was built on these sand dunes. They built the magnificent city of Tel Aviv. It was so cool from nothing. There was nothing there and then they built it, okay? While that is kind of true, Tel Aviv is like five kilometers, okay, from Jaffa, which was a massive port city, right? Tel Aviv was built on the outskirts of Jaffa from a lot of the people leaving Jaffa due to a variety of conflict, overpopulation, whatever reasons. It was basically built on the outskirts of, of Jaffa, Tel Aviv. So I feel like presenting this picture and saying, oh my God, the Jewish people build this, blah, blah, blah. It's like, okay, kind of. But like, if you turn the camera around, right? If you turn the camera around, you have a massive port city that is literally, uh, you've got a massive port city that's literally right next to it. You know, I think this is, this might even be, early, early 1900s. So it feels a little bit like bragging about like building a suburb. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I think it's kind of silly, but oh, I still, I like, I still like how Hassan maintains his policy of like never talking about me while like obsessively talking about me. It's always funny. Always good. Goals. Yeah. And anyone who tells you chat that like America is trying, cause I see these liberals online that are, uh, you know, just uh, reading Wikipedia pages for the first time in their lives to learn where, like, Palestine is, or, or... He's referencing the Jackson Hinkle tweet about me, and then he's referencing the streams I'm doing, which is hilarious. There is, um, we opened, like, some, like, it was some new map, and I didn't have, like, my bearings on the map. I'm like, where the fuck is Palestine in this map? And that got clipped as in, like, I don't know any of the geography of the area, I guess. Um, despite the fact that I think Hassan mixed up, like, Turkey and India on a map once? I don't remember. I'd have to find the clip or whatever. But yeah, it's funny that like everybody jumps on that now. But where like Palestine is or, or you know, uh, reading, uh, watching Prager U videos to, to develop talking points for themselves to defend like a position that is indefensible. Um, one thing that, uh, one thing that you'll- Can you show the clip of your mix up? Um, Jackson Hinkle, opponents don't know Palestine map. Is it this or something? I don't know. Somebody has a link of it somewhere, but a griper clipped it first, by the way, and Fuentes amplified it on his Telegram. Gotcha. I don't know if anybody has it. Was it this? Okay, dude. Yeah, I don't. Shut up. Okay. Nope. That was a failure. That was good. I think Kashmir. I don't know. It's, uh, no, 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 <laughs> dear God. Oh, you guys, have, this is a whole fucking nine minute video. You guys are obsessed. Oh my God. Destiny struggles to even find Israel on a map, bro. I can't. He's been reading the entire Wikipedia page for three weeks now. I think somebody just linked me like this new map and I was just trying to see like where the f we were at. This whole thing or? The light green is Palestinia. Wait, what light green? Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong area. This is Turkey. Oh, here, okay. Ugh. Ugh. What, uh. <laughs> what is this map? I think it was I think it's like an ancient or an older map of some shit. I don't even know what the time period is. I have no idea what it was, but yeah. But this is like the one that Jackson Hinkle amplified. <laughs> but I guess, yeah. Oh, this is a Roman map. Gotcha. The Roman Empire. Well, there you go. Wait, let me finish this video. I'm sorry. I cut it oh, off in the middle yeah. of the judgment. And anyone stuff. who tells you, chat, that like America is trying, because I see these liberals online that are, uh, you know, just uh, reading Wikipedia pages for the first time in their lives to learn where like Palestine is or, or you know, uh, reading, uh, watching Prager U videos to, to develop talking points for themselves to defend like a position that is indefensible. Um, one thing that, uh, one thing that you'll hear uh, is is this this notion that like Joe Biden is actually trying to stop and restrain Israel to the best of his ability. I'm sure you've seen this as well, Noah. Like, there's a lot of liberals out there who keep saying like Joe Biden is.
Who's, I wonder who he's talking about. Liberals that can't find Palestine on a map and read Wikipedia and say that Joe Biden is restraining, like, <laughs> Jesus Christ.